Victor, did you find your shoes? No, ma'am. Like you Aline, what is it? Victor, get your shoes. I'm going to church. Are well, you going to I ain't going because I got poop poop on this table and I'm sure these people ain't going to do it. But you're supposed to be trusting in God. I want to know why are you not going to church? Sarah, leave me alone. Don't go to church. Because John, the thing is... Anthony Wilson, why you don't want to go Sarah, to church? Sarah, if I do this, I have to go to church. You now these people are going to look at me and be like, hmm, where are you coming from? Look who they finally decides to show up. Why is he here? I don't want to hear that. Go thy way in peace, Sarah. Go thy way in peace. I am tired of you. I need to go to church. I'm late. I hope you come. Bye. As the congregation gathered that faithful Sabbath morning, with their hearts heavy with the burdens of the world, Pastor James took the pulpit with his voice booming and his spirit aflame with righteousness. He delivered a powerful sermon on the importance of setting a righteous example for the child or children under our care. His words strike a chord deep within the hearts of the congregation. As he speaks of the great responsibility they bear in shaping the hearts and minds of the young ones in their midst. He also touched on the importance of living a life of integrity and honor. For as we watch over these children, so too does God watch over us at all times, he said with passion and conviction. Pastor James proclaims the power of Christ's example as a perfect model for them to emulate. He speaks of the selflessness, compassion, and unwavering faith that Christ displayed and urges the congregation to follow in his footsteps. As he draws to a close, the atmosphere crackles with a divine energy. As the congregation is inspired to stand tall and carry the torch of righteousness forward. As church members renew their resolve, vowing to be beacons of light in a dark and tumultuous world, Sarah felt the urge to look around only to see John leaving. But the words preached by Pastor James echo in the heart of John and Victor. I would love to tell you that things changed that day for both John and Victor. But that was not the case. You see, for Victor, a seed was planted, one of the ever watchful gaze of the Almighty. But for John, things got worse. <sighs> oh gosh, but I got so much a bill prepared. I got light bill, phone bill, water bill, internet bill. I mean, no what for Dubai. And I can't go to church because my man is going to think I'd betray them. And I can't go to church because these people go on for no how I come back here. Eh? Oh God, what are you going to do, boy? Oh, Tony, this is my gene. The man going to help me with the money there, boy. Oh God. Hey Tony, you going on bro? This is John. I know we ain't talking 15 years, but you gotta remember Zoo, bro. Yeah, brother, yeah, yeah, all everything, bro. 
Alright, here we go. Um, but right now, I. Like, I just run out of money completely, bro. I run out of money. You just still um, sell sheep and ship it overseas? Oh, you still do that? So. Huh? What do you mean you steve them? I understand. No, I'm, I'm into the plan, I'm into the plan because right now, Tony, things just hard and I really need this money. I really need to pay off these bills and stuff. So, where's your plan? Mm hmm. Balman Farm. Okay. Yeah, bro. Don't, don't study. Don't study that. I ain't got much troops them, and them man gonna do the lookout for me. So you ain't gonna study though. Aye, bro. Good. Thanks. 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 Victor, come. Hilda. Son, we got the task. I know you ain't gonna like it, but. We got what we got, bro. We got to some shit. But that. But I don't know if it's Bible story, I ain't want to hear it. Time's hard, and I don't have a job, son. And I really need this money. We need this money. Bells got to pay, and so on. We have to steal some shit. So we can go with Tony at Bauman Farm. So we can get ready. Alright? Yeah, I know the plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So John, you're gonna get the ship. Uh -huh. So you're gonna look out. And I'm gonna be here in case any emergency. And if anybody come, just wave your grab so that we're gonna go for the right. Mm, sure that. John, you sure about ready for this job? You gotta do it. Whether you like it or not, you gotta do it. Listen to me, right? I know you want to do this, but you know time's hard right now, and we gotta get this money. So do your job properly. You hear what I'm telling you? Yeah, Dad. Okay, good. Okay, now, who the person there? Will you actually see somebody? Yes. So where's the person? Boy, get your act together, man. Shucks. Victor, who you see? Why you do this to me, boy? Dad, God is always watching. Remember Pastor James' sermon last Saturday? What did he say? He told us that God is always watching. What kind of example are you setting for me? Son, the thing is, I didn't really want to do this. It's just that 
times hard and I lose my job and I ain't got no money and I'm struggling. Dad. Like, I just don't know what to do, Victor. I Dad. don't know. No. Dad, don't worry. God is in charge. He'll provide. Man, you're the best son I ever had, man. Maybe it's time for a change. Maybe my two big sons could have been out of jail if I didn't do this kind of stuff. It's too late for that though. But maybe I can save my 18 year old son and the other little one. Maybe it's my bad example that got them with him there. Find a way to shine brighter than the day.